Avast, I'm Captain Bennett Hoffman, producer of People in Motion. Like you, I'm a naughty media pirate. That's cool though, even though you stole our film, we won't sue anyone. We hope you enjoy it, and if you do, we want to pay you to help promote it. Because we'd rather pay you than some media corporation. Just go to PimPirates.com, get a link, and every time we get paid, you'll get paid. So just go to PimPirates.com, get your link, and get paid. We hope you enjoy the movie. Yar. We were hunters and foragers. The frontier was everywhere. We were bounded only by the earth and the ocean and the sky. Today, we go about our business, unencumbered by the frontier. Society guides us. It gives us permission to drive on roads, to stop at red lights, and go on green. But something's not right. It often feels as if something is missing, as if the life society has allowed isn't quite enough. We spend so much time planning for the future. It seems we're forgetting how to live in the moment how to feel a deep and profound satisfaction with life. It was this feeling that led us to watch people in cities, trying to understand what drives them. They typically did the same three things, walk, sit, and shop. Everywhere we looked, it was the same three things, walking, sitting, shopping. Maybe that's why it was so refreshing to meet this guy, Paul Whitecotton. He wasn't walking or sitting or shopping. He was moving in a way we'd never seen. So we asked him why. Why do these stunts? He explained these aren't stunts. It's more than that. So why do I do this? I don't know. I don't think it's really a question of like why I do it. It's like one of those things where it just feels like the right thing to be doing as like right as it feels that you should be eating something when you're hungry. You can plan out your route, you can plan out what you're gonna do, what moves or whatever, but when you're actually doing it, you feel at peace with yourself and I don't know how to experience that doing anything else. That's why I always come back to it and that's why I have to do it, you know, like that's why it feels right because if there's one thing most people in this world would want is like inner peace, you know, just, so yeah, that's, that's what I get out of it. Inner peace? Happiness? By just playing with your environment? No equipment to buy or rules to follow? No walking, sitting, or shopping required? Just simple movement? That's the key to inner peace and happiness? Really? Paul offered to show us what he meant, so we took him up on it. And you know what? It turns out that playing with the world is a lot of fun. Bit by bit, we started to get it. Learned to face our fears, kept at it, got better, and started to understand what Paul was talking about. After that, we were hooked. So, with a borrowed camera and enough money for a tank of gas, we started filming. We discovered others who saw the world differently, people like David Agajanian. Together, we made a short film to help others see what they saw. with the results, but we had to return the borrowed camera. Our gas money was half gone, and we still wanted to film more people. We realized that if we wanted to keep filming, we needed funding. A friend recommended we try Kickstarter, a website for crowdsourced fundraising. We could tell people about our film idea. If they liked it, they'd back our project, in exchange for a copy when it was finished. We posted our video, offered rewards for backing the project, and to our great surprise, we raised $11,000. We could now afford filmmaking equipment, travel, and had the resources to find more people like Paul and David. Our first addition was Jacob Sile. He was a character and loved natural movement. Next up, Lonnie Tisdale. He was all about efficiency. 
getting from point A to point B as quickly as possible. Rounding out our crew was Brian Orozco. Stunts were his day job, and flow, or continuous movement, was his passion. With equipment, travel budget, and athletes ready, we planned to tour the West Coast. Starting in San Diego, we'd head up the coast towards LA, spend a few days in San Francisco, swing by Seattle, and end our tour at Burning Man, a massive interactive art festival in Nevada, celebrating radical self-expression. You'll hear people call it like free running or it's a little art dude, the placimo, art of displacement, urban sprinking. Like <laughs> there's like, so many different types of like movement that people do and they just give it these fancy names, but the spirit's the same all the way through. Parkour. Uh, parkour is the discipline of overcoming obstacles in one's path using only the human body. Um, in general, it's an art of movement. It's the art of movement. Learning how to master your body and master your ability to interact with obstacles in your environment. Moving through different environments and uh, learning how to move creatively and express yourself through movement. I think it, it encompasses all of those things. We start our tour in San Diego, the birthplace of California. With 300 plus days of sunshine a year, it's always nice to be here. This environment for me kind of counteracts my inner energy and I got a ton of it and I have to expel it in a lot of different ways. When you're doing parkour, you feel at one with everything. You know, you don't feel like you're you doing parkour. You feel like you're just part of what's around you and you feel happy in that. And you just like, you're on the same level as the environment and your world. And that, that is a very spiritual thing. One of the nicest parts of San Diego is Balboa Park. It's large, open architecture and interesting angles, make it one of Paul's favorite places to train.
know, there's a progressive nature to parkour. You see something and you want to do it, you have an idea of what you want to do and you work towards it and it's not like you always know exactly what needs to happen all the way through, but you have an idea and you start from there and what you do know you work with and then that helps you discover something else. Some call it parkour, others call it free running. Some just use the verb training. Whatever you call it, it's all about progression. Every big move starts small. sunset and it was time to head north. We said so long to the city of sunshine and started towards the city of angels, LA. On our way, we swing by Orange County to pick up this guy, Jacob Sile. To some, he may look like a monkey, but to us, he's our local guide, good friend, and quite a character. This is his favorite park and our first stop in Orange County.
Paul had been working up to this. One full rotation across an eight-foot gap between two ledges, and then up and back. He had the vision to see what he wanted to do. He understood each component piece, and he kept at it until he landed it perfectly. This model that Paul uses can be used by anyone to accomplish nearly anything. I was starting to see the power of this thing Paul calls parkour. Master yourself, and you can master anything. If you're doing parkour properly, you're not taking risks, you're, you're eliminating risks. When you're, when you're ready for something, you know that you're ready, you feel that you're ready, and you visualize from start to finish how this is going to happen. And then all it is, it's just a matter of, of completing that vision and just going through the motions. It's kind of laughable. I think fear is funny because you get, you get all worked up and you're like, you get jittery and you're like, oh no, 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 I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. And it's like, it's funny because you know you can, and so you just have to conquer it. Just the fact that you do experience fear of something, it's your body telling you like, hey, there's a risk, you know? So be aware of me, be aware of that risk, be aware of the consequences of not doing something correctly. And that's it, that it's just like your body's friendly reminder to not be reckless. And that's it, you just, you take it in and it's, it's good, it's, it's necessary. When you accomplish something physical that has scared you and you've overcome the obstacle plus your fear, which is one of the strongest obstacles there is, then it, it's, 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 it's almost undescribable. Continuing north, we swing by the Santa Monica Pier.
Yeah, parkour is, is definitely more than just a physical thing for me. It's really important to my whole life. Like anytime I feel overwhelmed and I feel out of control, I just go up on the roof or I go outside and I just start moving and I kind of forget about everything and I just feel alive and I, I feel more real. I feel more in touch with the moment, that, that moment. We tend to forget about each moment that passes as a whole moment, a whole universe in and of itself. And we get caught up in living and just kind of forgetting about that whole thing. And, and parkour is a way for me to sort of slow down and to appreciate that. By the time we arrive in LA, the sun has set, but the city is bright with lights. With a population of 4 million and 400 plus miles of concrete, a crowded city can feel like it's taken over both the land and some part of our humanity. It's comforting to know that the concrete can be reimagined with creative movement. Walls become more than walls, and steps are for more than just walking. We don't want to damage anything, you know? We don't want to damage property. We don't want to damage nature. We just want to experience it. I just get out and do parkour, and in that moment, I, I feel a sense of mastery over myself. It's the same concept of when angry people punch something. It's because they got to impart their will over something to feel in control, and parkour is a way more positive version of that. You know, you are controlling yourself, your will, is being put on the obstacles and it makes you feel very at peace, you know, it makes you feel confident, it makes you feel okay. It's a school unlike any other, where the teachers encourage you to move, and no one will ever tell you to sit still. From Los Angeles, we traveled to San Francisco, the city by the bay. It's Brian's hometown and has long been a city that sees the world a bit differently. Spot number one, the wave organ.
This same spot became a jam later in the day, a time when people of all skill levels trained together. The parkour community is super accepting of newcomers. I don't know, it's very, very welcoming. When I, when I came to my first session, um, you know, people were, had been practicing much longer than I had, and they were better, and um, they just taught me, you know? They weren't like, oh, this guy doesn't know how to do this. Like, who cares? You know, they were just like, oh, hey, you want to learn how to do this? I'm like, yeah, yeah can, can you teach me? Like, that's so cool. And they're like, yeah, this and that, you know? And I don't know, it's just, it's so positive. I don't even understand it. It's, it's, so, it's so good, you know? Watching someone when they're like super freaked out about anything, it doesn't matter what it is, they're just like freaked out and they're like, oh my God, but they know that they can do it. They just gotta get over that little hump, you know? And everyone's like, come on, come on, come on. Like, you got this, like, not like a pressure thing, but just a encouragement of like, did you know you have this, like, focus on that and bust this move, you know? And then, and they're like, all right. And they take that deep breath and they get their mind collected and they're ready to do it and they're focused and they, they do it and they get that, they hit it successfully for their first time doing it right. And they're just like, yeah. It doesn't matter if you got that move years before, you know, you understand exactly what they're feeling because you still remember when you got it successfully and like, and people who don't have that move are vicariously experiencing that success through the person who just got it. And it just, everyone is just like lit up and it's all positive and it's like, I don't know, that, that's like magic right there. Like that is just like, oh, you know? <laughs> it's just like, I don't know how to say it. It's just like, yes, like, I don't know, it's so good. It's really, really good. Thinking about all the, all the dope times, like with everyone, it's like, you know, 
means a lot. It's so profound. It's, so, it's totally profound. It's like, yeah. I don't think I really, really understand what it means to me until I'm talking about it, you know? From San Francisco, we head to Seattle, the Emerald City. A place where alternative ideas come to life. To deal with a drug abuse infestation under the Fremont Bridge, a group of forward-thinking city planners decided to troll the drug addicts by building a six-ton cement troll. It attracts people from all parts of the city to come play, and the drug abuse under the bridge has vanished. Seattle has a history of reimagining itself for the public good. In the mid-70s, they transformed an unused gas lighting plant into a 19-acre public park called Gasworks. In 1976, Freeway Park opened to the public. Designed by architect Lawrence Halperin, he hoped to create a space which would encourage people to play and reimagine their relationship with cement structures. Seattle is a city which nurtures new ways of thinking. And our next destination, Burning Man, is a place where radical new ideas can come to life. Burning Man, my gosh. I, where do I start with Burning Man? Just one word. In one word, describe Burning Man in <laughs> one word. Um, Indescribable. <laughs> it's indescribable. If I had to, yeah, if I had to describe Burning Man in one word, I'd say indescribable. Burning Man, a festival celebrating radical self expression. It happens once a year and lasts one week. It attracts scientists, free thinkers, philosophers, and others. It's a place where creativity is cherished and exploration is encouraged. At the end of the week, the art is burned, and the countdown starts for the next burn, a continuous cycle. Going out onto the desert and just seeing these crazy structures, giant furniture, <laughs> I mean, the temple to the man itself, giant DJ booths like in the sky, the, the lights, I mean, everything was just, just incredible. It was spectacular. I mean, it was, it was like going into another world.
I'd never experienced anything like that in my whole life. I didn't know what to expect. I knew I was going with, with, uh, with great people and I was going to have fun, but I didn't realize that, that everybody there was going to treat me like family, that I was, I was coming into this big thing that it was just something bigger than all of us. And then we got our skydiving crew over there and then there were metal workers and fire people and stilt walkers and acrobatic people and then there were people that, that were just making crazy boxes for you to go inside and just get all jumbled up in just balloon lines two miles long and weird art of every sort. I mean, it was, it was a blast. It was too much fun. saw that sign and I'm just like, what? Like, that's so cool. And then I was looking at the stride distances on the ground and everything, and I was like, man, this is like really doable. Shortly 
after my feet hit the top of the L. It tipped and my feet slid forward. I knew that if I just slid off backwards, I wasn't gonna rotate. So you had, I had to keep my legs straight as long as possible until my upper body fell over and then snap it shut like a knife, you know? And that will produce rotation to get you around to your feet. Yeah, I land on my feet um, and then like kind of collapse down to one side of my leg. Yeah, yeah, I walked away, it was cool. <laughs> I was like, all right, nice. Like, wasn't gonna try it again after that, but especially I didn't want to break the sign and didn't want to break myself, so. But it, it is a great, great experience to truly fully live in the moment because you have to, because choosing that, choosing to do it, you have to go 100% or else you're like, not committing suicide, but just like being very, very reckless with your life and like that's not what I'm about. Parkour at Burning Man was received very well, actually. Like, we had people coming up to us thanking us for doing parkour in their area. I think most of the people there are already really open-minded, so they, they were really happy to see what we were doing and to I, just to kind of watch. And some people even got involved. People jumped in and started moving themselves. They'd come up and like, thank you for that, like, because they got to experience that. And I was like, word? Like, you're welcome. Like, what? That was so cool. They. Like they recognized what we were doing and that we, like, we loved it and it meant something to us. And it was obviously a form of self-expression, which is um, very highly regarded at Burning Man. It's almost like a post-apocalyptic town that's, that's working. It was like a refresher in life. Just remember all the cool, happy things, like the simple things, like lights and pretty colors and just interacting with people that you don't even know. Like, it's more open there. It's more, uh, you just talk to someone, they'll be like, hey, what's up, how's it going, you know, and genuinely care that you're having a good time. I feel like I have such an extended family just across North America, Canada, Mexico, just because of parkour. And Burning Man was a lot like that. I mean, everybody there, they were from different places, they had different backgrounds. But there was this, we all had some one thing in common. We were all there for the same reason. It's all about having a good time. It's all about love, baby. <laughs> It's all about, it's all about love. By the end of the week, all of the art would burn. The flames were a reminder that everything is temporary. To appreciate the things around us now, because someday soon, it will likely be gone.
in that moment living, doing parkour and moving and having fun and not even thinking about what stresses you out in life or other things that you have to do. I mean, like it's great to think about responsibilities and what you're gonna do the next day, but that can't be what you're thinking about all the time because that means you're always gonna be living in the future. And despite that being extremely important, you gotta take some time just in that moment and experience everything around you and appreciate what is around you. I think that a lot of people don't move because they're embarrassed. They're afraid of what they look like to others. And I think they're afraid of messing up or hurting themselves. And you need to be okay with messing up. If you don't mess up, you're not gonna get better. You have to mess up to learn a lesson. I keep that mindset through my whole life. I mean, when I'm just walking around day to day, dealing with people, dealing with problems, um, I never really let it overwhelm me because I know that I can overcome any obstacle. It doesn't matter if it's a physical obstacle or a mental obstacle. I can take a problem and I can break it down into smaller pieces and I can accomplish each piece part by part in succession until I'm completely over the obstacle, until I'm stronger and better because of it. And I, it's, a, it's a template for accomplishing all of my goals in life. We started this film trying to understand what was missing from our modern world. We found an answer in parkour. It's an incredible tool which nurtures freedom and creative self-expression at the most fundamental level. It can help you discover your potential physically, mentally, and emotionally. People who live parkour are very like the rest of us, with more of our strengths and few of our weaknesses. They are confident, far-seeing, capable and prudent. They remind us that our world can be a magical place and people in motion are capable of incredible things. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed People in Motion. If you did, we'd like to pay you to help promote it. We'd rather pay you than some marketing corporation, 
So go to pimpirates.com, and every time we get paid, you'll get paid. Just go to pimpirates.com, get your link, and get paid.